This is PsychBoost helping you with your psychology qualification one video at a time. This video is on social influence and in this 11th GCSE video we'll be covering obedience. The very kind support of students and teachers who donate on Patreon help me help you by continuing to make these videos and resources. A very big thank you for your help guys. To join them, follow this link. For everyone, you might want to check out the free worksheet for this video and the quiz. As usual, here are the terms for the AQA GCSE specification we're going to cover in this video. As we go through the video, they're going to be in red text, and you need to be able to respond to questions on all of this. So, to define obedience, we would say that you're obedient when your behaviour is the result of the orders or demands of a person you see as an authority figure. A very famous psychologist called Stanley Milgram investigated obedience in one of the most famous psychology studies. He used the study as a demonstration of his agency theory that suggests all people are likely to be obedient to an authority figure. Milgram's experiment showed that 100% of participants acting as a teacher would give what they thought was a real painful 300 volt electric shock to what they thought was a participant in the next room, all on the orders of a scientist acting as an authority figure. The obedience was so extreme 65% of the participants actually gave a potentially lethal maximum voltage, even after the tender victim stopped shouting so seemingly unconscious or dead. Milgram thought that we all had the potential to be obedient, but there were social factors, aspects of the situation, that made obedience more or less likely. Agency. We spend most of our time in an autonomous state, which means we feel in charge, and more importantly responsible for our decisions. But we can give up our agency through something called an agentic shift. If this happens, we are now in an agentic state and we allow the authority figure to make our decisions for us. We will follow their orders and the responsibility we felt for our actions switches to them. Authority. We learn who is and who isn't a legitimate authority figure through socialisation. We're taught that police and scientists are higher on the social hierarchy than people like postal workers and cleaners. We will often make judgments on if we should obey on the uniforms that people wear. Culture. The social hierarchy varies between cultures. We learn through socialisation to respect the same types of people as our parents, our teachers and our peers. An example, some cultures place older people higher on the social hierarchy than other cultures. Proximity. Your sense of personal responsibility for your action is increased the closer you are to the person you're hurting. Milgram conducted a variation of his study so that the participant and victim were in the same room. This reduced the number of participants that were obedient from 65 to 40%. When evaluating Milgram, we can consider real-world examples of people committing terrible acts while under orders. High-ranking Nazis like Eichmann, one of the main Nazis in charge of organising the Holocaust, were particularly interesting to Milgram. At his trial, Eichmann claimed that he didn't feel responsibility for his actions as he was only following Hitler's orders. Milgram's own study is evidence in support of his agency theory, finding 65% of participants obeyed the authority figure to give a potentially lethal shock. However, all the participants in Milgram's research experienced the same social pressure to obey the authority figure or 35% of people were able to resist the orders. The personality or disposition of these individuals may explain how these people were able to resist when so many people didn't. Later research showed that many of those people who resisted the authority figure had an internal locus of control. So Milgram suggested that all of us could be obedient, and if we were obedient or not depended on situational factors. But another theorist at that time, Adorno, disagreed with Milgram. Adorno thought that there were personality differences between people who were obedient and people who would resist authority. According to Adorno's theory of the authoritarian personality, someone who is excessively obedient has a condition similar to a mental health disorder. An authoritarian personality starts an early childhood experience. This trauma from a strict upbringing, likely with physical punishment. So, as we learn to respect authority through socialisation, this excessive discipline from the parents leads to growing up with too much respect for authority and extreme obedience. 
taking the idea of displacement from Freud, Adorno says these individuals feel anger towards their parents for the harsh discipline. But they displace this anger onto people they see as socially inferior, weaker targets like minorities. Adorno developed a way of measuring the authoritarian personality. It's called the F scale, and the F stands for fascism. This is a questionnaire measuring, among other things, obedience, respect for authority, a rigid cognitive style, which means these people see everything in black and white, and it also measures dislike for minorities. In evaluating Adorno's theory of the authoritarian personality, we can support the theory of research. Interviews were taken with the participants in Milgram's first four studies. Those that shocked to the full 450 volts scored higher on the F scale than participants who refused to continue. But Adorno's work suggesting that the authoritarian personality is a personality type similar to a mental health condition struggles to explain why the number of people who gave the full shocks in Milgram's study is so large, or why many millions of people complied with the Holocaust. The authoritarian personality is effectively a criticism of people who are on the extreme right-wing politics. Opponents point out there have been authoritarians on the left of politics too. So now we've covered the content, you need to be able to use that information to actually answer questions. Here are five questions I've made to test your skills. So pause the video and give them a go. And for those of you who support me on Patreon, I've put together an additional video showing you how to answer these questions properly. To everybody else, thanks for watching, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video, Social Influence, Pro-Social Behaviour.